bright and the harvest crops are ripe. Then the farmer and his wife, the wagon load to bring the food down the road for you and for me. The blacksmith keeps his fire bright, the bellows blows, his hammer strikes, the blacksmith works with all his might to bend the iron, to make the shoe, to shoe the horse for you and for me. Silas Pitt worked hard, mighty hard, as a blacksmith ought, and uh, like a blacksmith, for the most part, he was self-taught. Now, uh, Silas there could hammer a red-hot iron and shape it up until it was wrought the way he wanted. That's a hook he's making. And Silas could shoe a horse, <laughs> I'll say, along with the best of them. Now, some might not consider this a gentle art, but horses know whether a man is smart or not, and country folks aren't fooled much by a lot of talk. Come on there, Bessie. Yes, sir. The miller's wheel goes round and round. The miller's stream keeps flowing down. The miller works the whole day round to grind the wheat, to make the flour, to bake the bread for you and for me. what folks call the miller there. Tom always saw to it that you got more than good measure. To him, that was just about the main part of his pleasure. <laughs> sure, a good living was what one expected out of things. But folks had more to live for then than what they uh, just piled up or collected. And the wheat to make the flour, to bake the bread for you and for me. Seems like men worked longer hours then without one eye set on the clock. You take those honorable gents known as the press, newspaper fellows. Why, there's never been a time or place, I reckon, where people didn't hanker for a way of knowing what was going on around them, from his nibs King George III to the fellow right next door. <laughs> but getting out the news in those days meant hand-setting of the type, working the presses, smoothing out of the ink, and turning out each and every sheet, one at a time. Well, at least uh, this process gave the editor a lot more time to think. The man may work from sun to sun, the woman works is never done. She
She tends and cares for everyone. She spins the yarn, she weaves the cloth, she makes the clothes for you and for me. In those days, it took an apprentice seven full years of labor before he could claim to have mastered his trade. He needed to know not just a part, but how the whole darned thing was made. For seven long years I apprenticed to learn the carpenter's trade. I studied hard from master and did each thing he bade. I served my apprenticeship with Master William D. And there's no better carpenter than Master D and me. Those forefathers of ours, you may have heard, were over strict in many ways, but to them, no man was better than his word. And excellence was more to be valued than having money in the bank. For integrity requires no vaults or bookkeeping. It's deposited in the heart. And as the years roll by, it compounds in interest from the very start. I will give you riches rare, gifts of crystal treasures fair, costly gifts from o'er the sea, if you say you'll marry me. Give me presents from your heart, and we never more shall part. A present by your own hand made makes all other treasures fade. All day long I work at my trade. I do my best each passing day. Not with coins of gold am I paid, but with man's integrity. machine as yet had been invented that could give an artisan that same sense of pride he got from doing a job well himself. Smoothing out a delicate edge or line, giving extra strength to the place where it was needed most. Why, sure it took a lot more time what of it, if it did the job right? That was something every worker worth his salt felt he owed to himself. All day long I work at my trade. I do my best each passing day. Not with coins. 
with man's integrity. When my bones are laid to rest, right on my grave for all to see. In my work I give my best for my own integrity. Come on, get up there. There we go. Back then, a man found pleasure just making a haul along a shady road. Sure, why not? Gave him time to see things, time to hear life going on all around. Life clean and clear. Easy there now. Take your time. See you later. As America grew and its villages prospered, there came into being the country store, and folks began going to town more and more. Some to post a letter, some for wool to darn a sock or mend a skirt or sweater. Most farmers had to be frugal, and their women, land alive, women then were downright thrifty. People didn't up and buy things right off in a huff or jiffy. A length of material was measured with care, checked for its seams, gauged for its flair. Uh, what's that thing? It looks like a shrimp trap. <laughs> it's what they called a hope skirt. You see, it was fashioned to hold the dress out and the lady in. I'll make me a dress so bonny fair And sew it all with a silk and thread With ribbons bright I'll tie my hair And put on Petticoats of red. I'll tie at my waist a sash of green. Golden shoes on my feet I'll wear. And over my heart a rose I'll pin for my love who is so. Even the children who came into the store to buy a penny's worth of candy seldom bought more. Don't it make your mouth water just to think about it? Lemon drops, licorice, peppermint sticks, yeah. mm. and taffy, yes, sir. <laughs> Good thing. Build and grow for you and for me. 